Hello there and welcome. In the previous episode we added a new weapon into our game, we also did a few more changes to support multiple weapons. In this episode we're going to add the option to pick up weapons from the environment and also switch between weapons that we already picked up. Now there are many ways to do it and of course it depends on the type of game you want to have. Some games allow you to have an inventory and then you can just pick up a lot of weapons and switch between them. And other games like Call of Duty and Battlefield just allow you to hold two or three weapons and then you can switch between weapons that you find on the floor but you always only have two weapons on you, usually a side weapon and a main weapon. So we are going to do something similar. We're going to be able to pick up two different weapons and we're going to be able to switch between them and then if we find another weapon that we like we can switch the weapon that we have and pick up the weapon on the floor. So now we have this weapon spawn object but we also want to create two more objects, one for each slot. Next we're going to make sure that our prefabs are updated so we go over here and we see that there are no changes available and then we are going to simply delete them from our scene. Next we're going to place our weapons somewhere inside our environment so we have this firing range and we're going to place them on this table so we're going to start with the pistol we simply go to our prefabs and then we're going to drag the pistol into the scene so we drag it into the root not inside the player and then we just need to play with the positioning now as you can see we have different values and it means that we lost all the values that we had for the positioning when the player is actually holding the pistol so because we don't want to lose these values and we still have them inside the prefab, right? Then it means that we need to save them somehow. Otherwise, when we're going to apply this prefab, these values are going to delete the values that we had before. And then when we are going to pick up the weapon, it's going to look very weird inside the first person view. So for this, we're going to open our weapon script and over here we're going to create two vector trees that are going to store the position and the rotation of the weapon when it's actually going to be spawned in the player's hand. So we're simply going to copy all of these values into the spawn position and the spawn rotation. Now if we go to our pistol model and if we want to save this position as the prefab because maybe we want to have a couple of other models over here or maybe somewhere else but we do want them in this position then we can simply create a new prefab out of this. So we can create an original one or just a prefab variant. So let's say original and we can see that this one already has the new values but we still keep the spawn position and the spawn rotation because these are the fine-tuned values that we're going to use when we actually pick up the weapon and place it in the player's hand. So let's delete the old one. Let's rename this one to be the regular pistol. Now we can drag it into the scene it will be in this position. The next thing we want to do is go to the animator and simply disable the component because we are not interested in using the animator when the weapon is on the table. So in order to pick up a weapon, we want to basically just point at it with this little dot over here that we have in the center of the screen. And then when we hover over it, then we can press some kind of button and it will pick up the weapon. So for this, we're going to create some kind of interaction manager or selection manager you can call it whatever you want because we still don't have anything like that in our game so we're going to create a new empty object and we're going to name it interaction manager and we're going to create a script with the same name this interaction manager should be a singleton so we're going to delete all of this we will go to our sound manager and we're going to copy the awake 
and also this part over here. And now we have a singleton because we do want to be able to access this manager from anywhere inside our project. Next, we're going to create an update method. And inside, we want to create some kind of raycast that is going to shoot a ray from the middle of the screen. And when we hit something, we're going to check if it's a weapon. And if it's a weapon, for now, we just want to print that we hit a weapon. So all we do over here is create a ray that goes from the middle of our screen. And then when this ray cast hits something, we're going to take the transform and the game object of this thing that we hit. And this will become the object that we hit. And if this object that we hit has a weapon component, it means that it's a weapon. And then we just want to print weapon selected for now. And later we're going to do something else. So now if we run the game and we point at the pistol, we can see at the bottom weapon selected. Next, we want to create some kind of outline on the weapon. So when the player points at the weapon, he actually knows that he's hovering over the weapon and not just guessing it. So we can use a free package that you can find in Unity Store. It's this asset over here. And all you need to do is download this and import it into your project. Of course, you can find the link for this in the description. And then when you download this, you're going to see the package over here. So you actually don't need to go inside the package, but we do get a script named outline. And then all we need to do is click on our model and add this outline over here. So outline, and just notice that there is also the outline that is built in Unity. So this is an outline that we use for text and for UI, but we don't want this, we want the outline script. And now it's going to give us different options, but we actually don't need to touch anything. It's going to work the way it is right now. Of course, you can change the color, you can change what to outline, but as I told you, this is going to work as it is. And now if we run the game, we can see that the pistol is outlined, but of course we don't want it to be outlined just like that. We want it to be outlined when we hover over it. So in the beginning, the script is going to be disabled and we're going to enable it inside the code. Then back inside the interaction manager, we are going to create a variable that is going to store the weapon that we're hovering. And then inside the update method, if we hit the weapon, then we want to activate this outline script. And if it's not selected anymore, then we want to hide it. So very simple, if we actually hover over our weapon, then we're going to store this weapon inside this hovered weapon variable. And that's just because if we're not hovering over it, we still want to access it. Okay, so we're going to store it over here outside of this if statement. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to access it when we're not hovering it. Then after we saved it inside this hovered weapon, we're going to access this outline component and we're going to enable it. But if we're not hovering over the weapon, then we want this previously hovered weapon that is saved over here to make its outline script disabled. And now if we run the game and we hover over the pistol, we can see that it's outlined. And then when we hover outside of it, the outline is gone. Before we deal with picking up the weapon, we do have a small issue that we need to fix. If we run the game and we click on our mouse, the weapon is going to shoot. And if we press on R, 
it's going to reload it. So the inputs are still controlling the weapon even though we are not holding it. So we do want to fix this. We don't want to be able to control the weapon if it's not inside our hand. So inside the weapon script at the top, we are going to create a new boolean. Public bool is active weapon. And this will let us know if this weapon is the active weapon, if this is the weapon that we're actually using and holding in our hand. And then we scroll to our update method and we're basically going to take all of this code and we're going to surround it with an if statement and only if this boolean is true, this weapon is the active weapon, then we're going to be able to shoot the weapon and reload the weapon. So all of this should be surrounded with an if statement and an easy way to do it is simply select all of this code and then right click, snippet, surround with, and we have this if option over here. And now we can say is active weapon. So if it's the active weapon, then all of this code will run. Otherwise, nothing will happen when we shoot or when we reload. And of course, as default, it's going to be false because in the beginning, the weapon will be somewhere else on the floor, on a table. So it's not going to be the active weapon. And now, even if we click on the mouse, it's not going to shoot and nothing is going to happen. Next, we're going to finally pick up the weapon. And for this, we're going to create yet another singleton because it's a good thing to separate all of the code as much as you can. Otherwise, you're going to have all the code inside one script and it's going to get messy and it's not a good way to work. So we're going to create a new empty object and name it Weapon Manager. And we don't have a weapon manager. We only had the weapon that goes on the weapon model. But now we want something that is going to control all the weapons and the way we deal with weapons and switch between weapons. So this will be the job of the weapon manager. So we create a script with the same name. And of course, it's going to be a singleton. So we go over here, we copy all of this. We delete this and we rename this. Then inside we're going to create a method named public void pickup weapon. And inside it's going to receive a game object because when we're going to pick up a weapon, we want to receive the actual game object of the weapon, the model, and then we're going to be able to get the information about it. We're going to be able to move it to a different place. So it's going to have a parameter of type game object and we're going to name it weapon or rather picked up weapon. Then inside the interaction manager, when we hover over a weapon, then we're going to call this method. So weapon manager, pick up weapon, and we need to provide it with the weapon. So the weapon is this object hit by Raycast game object. So for example, if we're going to hover over the pistol, then this pistol game object is going to be passed into this pick up weapon. And of course we want to run this only if we press on some kind of button. So again, let's take this snippet surround with if, and then if input get key down, and you can put whatever key you want. I'm going to use the F key because it's a key that is used in many other games. So if we're going to press on the F key, it's going to pick up the weapon. Now inside the weapon manager, what we want to do is to check if it's actually working. So for now, we're going to just destroy this weapon. And now if we hover over this pistol and if we press on the F key, it's going to destroy this object. So we know that's working. Now, of course, we don't want to destroy the weapon. We want to simply 
change the position of this weapon inside our hierarchy. So instead of the weapon laying inside the root or inside the environment, we want to move it and be a child of one of these two slots. Inside the weapon manager, we're going to have a public list of game objects, and these will be the two different weapon slots. Then if we go and click on the weapon manager and we go over here, we can see the weapon slots. So all we're going to do is drag the first weapon slot over here and then the second weapon slot. Next, we also want to have a reference to the active weapon slot. So public game object active weapon slot. And then we're going to have a start method. And inside when we start the game, the active weapon slot will be the weapon slots at the first position. So the first weapon slot, this one will be the active weapon slot when we just start the game. But of course we can switch between them when we press on some kind of button. Next, we're going to create an update method. So inside the update method, we simply loop over all of these weapon slots that are sitting inside this list. And if one of these slots is the active slot, then we're simply going to make the actual game object of the slot active. Otherwise, we're going to set it to false. So it means that in the beginning, this slot will be active and this slot will be disabled. And you can see that right now both of them are active, but if we start the game, the first one is active and the second one got disabled. Theoretically, this code should also work if you want to have more than only two slots. So it will always make the first slot active and then you can switch between them and it should work. Now inside the pickup weapon, we actually want to pick up the weapon and position it inside the active weapon slot. So if this is the active weapon slot, it's going to take this pistol and it's going to make it a child of this weapon slot. So we're going to do it over here. So over here, we're going to create a dedicated method that is going to equip the weapon into the active weapon slot. So first of all, we take this weapon and we set its parent to be the active weapon slot and the active weapon slot always gets updated and we have it over here. Then we're going to grab the weapon script from this weapon and then we can simply set the local position of this model according to the spawn position and the spawn rotation. And these two are the vectors that we created in the beginning of the episode, the spawn position and the spawn rotation. Because right now we want the weapon model to be in the hands of the player and we don't want it to just lay on its side. We want it to be in the exact position that we fine tuned a few episodes earlier. And then after we deal with the positioning, we also want to make this weapon to be the active weapon. And this way, the update method is going to work because it's going to become the active weapon. So now if we run the game and we press on F, it's going to equip the pistol inside the first weapon slot and we can see it over here. And we can shoot, we can reload, and of course the animation is not working, but that's just because we still did not activate it. Now, before we deal with the animation, we also want to 
deal with a scenario when we already have a weapon in our hand, but we try to pick up a new weapon. So for example, we found this pistol, and then we found an assault rifle, and then we're going to hover over the assault rifle and press on F, it's going to switch between both of these weapons and then the pistol is going to be on the table and the assault rifle is going to be in our hand. So over here inside the add weapon into active slot, before we do anything with the weapon, we want to have a method named drop current weapon and we're going to pass the picked up weapon as well because we want to get information from this weapon. So let's create this method. So what is going on over here? Basically when we try to pick up another weapon and we already have a weapon inside our hand, so we check if the active weapon slot already has something inside of it, right? If the child count is bigger than zero. So if we already have a weapon inside the slot, we want to drop the weapon that we have inside the slot. So if we had the pistol inside the slot, we're simply going to get this pistol and we're going to save it inside this variable. And then we're going to disable it from being the active weapon. And we're going to set the parent of this weapon to be the same parent of the weapon that we're picking up. And then we're also setting the position of this weapon that we're picking up to be the position that we want to drop and the rotation to be the rotation of the weapon that we drop. So we basically switch between all of these values. But of course, all of this will happen only if we already have something inside this weapon slot. And now in order to test this, we will go to our table and I don't want to add the M16 right now. It will just take time. We're going to do it in the end of this episode. For now, we're going to duplicate this pistol. We're going to drag it over here. And just remember that it has this one over here. And now if we're going to run the game, and I'm going to pick up this one, we can see that the clean one is inside the first slot. And if I'm going to try to pick up this one, it's simply switch between both of them. So if I'm going to shoot with this one and I only have three bullets left and then I'm going to switch, we can see that this pistol has a full magazine. Now you can also see the outline and you can see that the outline is covering the entire model effect. So this is a bug that we're going to fix. To fix this, we will go into the interaction manager and over here, when we're actually hovering over the weapon, we also want to make sure that this weapon is not the active weapon. So, so if it's not the active weapon and it's actually a weapon, only then hover and enable this outline. Otherwise, make it without the outline. So now if we pick up this one and then we try to pick up this one, we don't see the outline. Next, we want to be able to switch to the second weapon slot. So we want to make the second weapon slot our active weapon slot. And then we can basically pick up a new weapon into this slot or if we have a weapon in this slot and a weapon in this slot, it will simply switch between both of these weapons because it basically just switches between the active weapon slot. So inside the weapon manager, we're going to have another method.
So we're going to have this switch active slot that receives a number for a slot. And then we basically check if we have something inside our active slot. If we have a child inside, then we're simply going to make it false because we don't want this to be the active weapon anymore. And then we make the active weapon slot become the new slot that is inside the index of the number that we passed inside. So if we're going to pass in zero, it's going to be the first slot. And if we passed one, it's going to be the second slot. Because over here, the zero element is the first slot and the first element is the second slot. Then we also check if there is something inside the active slot right now, and then we make the new weapon the active weapon. And we need to do these checks because if, for example, we have nothing inside both of these slots and we switch to the second slot, it's going to try to make this weapon false, but we don't have anything inside the slot and it's going to crash. That's why we need to check this. Then in order to actually call this method and provide it with a slot number, we will go to our update method over here. After this for each, So if we press on alpha one, and that's just the number one key on top of our keyboard, then it's going to send in the first index and it's going to switch it to the first weapon slot. And if we press on the second key, then it's going to send inside the first element and it's going to switch to the second weapon slot. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, alpha one will be this one and alpha two will be this one. So these are the alpha keys. And now the first weapon slot is active. And if I'm going to press on alpha two, it's going to switch to the second one and the second one will become active. And then I'm pressing on one again, it's going to make this one active. And now if I pick up this one, it's going to go into the first weapon slot. But if I press on number two, it's going to make this one unactive and this one active. And then I can just pick up this one. So now the second pistol went into this slot. The first pistol is here. And if I'm going to press on the first one, it's going to switch between both of these pistols. Although we can't notice this because they look the same, but let's say I'm going to shoot and this one will have zero bullets. Then I'm going to switch to the second one and the second one has seven bullets. And later when we're going to add the M16, it's going to be even more noticeable. The last thing that we want to deal with is making the animator active when the weapon is active. So to do that, we will open our weapon manager. And right after we add a weapon under this part that we make the weapon active, we also want to go into the weapon and we want to reach the animator and then we want to make it enabled. But as you can see, it's not allowing us because the animator is not public. So we don't want to make it public. Otherwise, we're going to see it inside the inspector and we're going to be able to drag another animator inside. So we don't want to allow this. Instead, we're going to make it internal. And that just means that other scripts are going to be able to access it, but we're not going to be able to access it from the inspector. So inside the weapon manager, we can now access it and make it enabled. Next, we will also go to the drop current weapon. And over here, we're going to do the same thing, but this time we need to access the weapon this way. Animator, enabled, and make it false. Now, basically it should work. It should enable the animator, but you're going to see that there is some kind of problem and of course we're going to fix it, but just don't be alarmed when you see it. So now when I'm picking up this pistol, you can see that it looks fine. We can see that it's actually animated, but if I'm going to try to shoot, the weapon is going to disappear. And it's actually not disappearing 
but it just moves to a different position because the values that we set inside the animation are not the values that we have over here. So it's actually very simple to fix this. First of all, let's delete the other prefab because we want to fix it over here and then we're going to duplicate it again. So to fix this, all you need to do is take the weapon model, drag it inside the first slot, and then we're going to press on the model and our animation tab. So we're going to start recording and we're going to just make sure that it's on zero, zero. And we're going to disable the recording. So now when we play, we can see that it's in the right position. And then we need to also do this for the recoil. So we go into the recoil, but in the recoil, only the rotation is getting changed. So we need to also set the position to be as it was before. So then we simply go over here, we enable the preview of course, and then we start record, and we're going to set this to be 0 0.1, 1.5 and 0 0.6 and then if we play it we can see that it looks fine over here and we're going to stop recording. So now we can take it back into the root and now if we run the game and we pick up the pistol we can see that it's animated in the idle state and it's also animated in the recoil. So we fixed the problem. And that's just an annoying thing that we need to fix because it did not save the animation with the old values, rather it gave them the new values. And we're going to do it again with the M16, but for now, everything is working for the pistol. So let's just make sure that this weapon system is actually working and we can add any kind of weapon model that we want and it will still work. So we will open our project, prefabs, we're going to drag the M16 into the scene, then we need to position it on this table. Then of course we also want to save the spawn value, so we go inside the prefab, so we're going to save these values. Then we also need to disable the animator. We want to add the outline script and disable it. And the last thing we need to do is fix the animation. So we click on the M16. We drag it into the first slot. Then we click over here. We click on preview. Then for the idle, we can see that it's actually laying on its side. So we're going to start recording, but we're going to change this to 0, 0 and minus 90. And then we're going to switch to recoil. And over here we need to start the preview and, and record. Then we want to change this to 0, minus 90, 0, so it kicks back, and there is another animation for the M16, the reload one, preview, start recording, and we need to set all of these values, so 0, 0, minus 90, Oh yeah, over here it's not 1, it's 0 0.1. So we fixed all the animations, and now we can drag it back into the root. We can make sure that all the changes are applied, and then we're going to make a new prefab out of it. We're going to delete the old one. And now we can just have a couple of M16s over here. 
a couple of pistols. And now if we run the game, we can pick up a pistol. We can switch it with the M16. And you can see that the pistol goes over here. We can switch to the second slot and then pick up this pistol. Of course, later we can also create an animation for switching the weapons, right? Because right now they just spawn. And now you can add any weapon that you want. Like I showed you, you can create even a hundred different weapons and it will all work the same way. Now there is a small bug that happens from time to time and maybe you're never going to actually stumble upon it, but I just want to show you a way to fix it. And it happens when you switch a weapon from the table and then you drop the other weapon and you do it very fast. It basically keeps the weapon that you have in your hand outlined. So if you have this problem, you can just fix it by going to the weapon script and inside the update, we just want to make sure that if the weapon is active, well, actually we can do it over here. We're going to get the outline script and we're going to make it false, false. So this way, as long as the weapon is active, it will never get outlined. And of course, if I'm going to encounter other bugs, I'm going to show you how to fix them later on. And also if you encounter some bugs, you can let me know in the comment because that's one of the things we need to deal with in games. We always need to play and test our game and find different situations that we still did not cover inside the code. So if you find something like that, let me know and I'm going to find the fix for that. So that's all for this episode. Please subscribe if you're still not subscribed. This is what gives me motivation to continue working on this channel. And see you next time.